Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, Ryan back here with you again on a, uh, I guess it, you could call it a nice uh, January day up here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, decided to go ahead and change uh, this DPF out on this truck. Uh, I had a remanufactured uh, unit that was in here previously by running the numbers. Uh, I've cleaned it once uh, last last February, so it's got a year on it and close to 100,000 miles so and it was kind of acting up before we changed out that sensor and all that but uh, it's kind of getting to the point where it needs to be cleaned or changed out and given that this is a reman DPF in it now and I've already had it cleaned once and the numbers were kind of mediocre from the last cleaning um, I've decided just to put a whole new uh, a new DPF filter in it or I guess that's saying the word twice but because <laughs> the DPF actually has filter in it uh, so I uh, called around uh, Kenworth uh, they they only offer a, another reman unit and they're fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars with a seven hundred dollar core charge for those uh, reman DPF units and uh, so I, I deal with a place up here in Cleveland um, called DMW Diesel and they're they're pretty big up in New York and I think they, they're as far out as Colorado um, with a couple branches here in between. Um, they do in, injector services, they'll rebuild injectors, injection pumps, they do some work on tractors and stuff like that for me. I, I bought my EGR cooler and turbo up there for this truck, uh, for this Cummins ISX-15. And uh, so pretty pretty reasonable prices. Uh, I think when I bought my EGR cooler up there, I paid like $1,100, $1,100 or $1,200 for EGR cooler uh, for a new one. And uh, I got this DPF up there for uh, for fourteen hundred, fourteen twenty, I think, plus tax. So it was a little over fifteen hundred dollars out the door for a brand new DPF, not a reman. So I wanted something that was brand new that I can I could get over a hundred thousand miles out of before having any trouble with it. Uh, since, like I said, I already had a reman from from Kenworth and all that prior to this, and uh, didn't. I was hoping to get a little bit more out of it, but it is what it is. Uh, so that also that kit that I uh, once either at the end of this video I'm gonna do this in a two part I'm gonna do the removal as a part one and then do the reinstallation as a part two follow on you know in t two parts to get it out there quicker because uh, I'll probably take it out today take it in the shop take it apart and rebuild it and everything in there and then put it back on tomorrow because it's gonna be getting dark here pretty soon so um, the first thing on these, uh, this is a Kenworth T660, and again, uh, it's a Cummins ISX15 CM2250 uh, 2013 truck, 2012 engine. Uh, I, for the process that I'm going to show you guys here, I've kind of modified the carrier of the SCR and DPF. Because uh, when I take this, the steps off here, you'll see everything, but there's like a carrier that with the SCR on top, DPF on the bottom. And, uh, and most videos you watch, or if you look at a Kenworth or, uh, you know, Cummins, they're going to want you to take that whole carrier off, which I think is kind of a hassle. And just in my opinion, I mean, there may be a reason to the rhythm, you know, rhyme, whatever, uh, why they want you to do that. Um, but I think it's probably just a ploy to get you to buy more parts, uh, more gaskets. And if you tear a sensor or a plug or something up, it's a way to get you to buy parts. So you can actually, this, this casing down here I'm going to show you in a minute, it's got rivets in it, but the bottom cover, you can actually take a grinder and cut the rivets off, and then you can put bolts back in it, and you can take just the DPF um, out the bottom of the casing. Uh, so to do it this way, you're going to need to raise the truck up a little bit, and as you can see, um, I kind of drove it up on some blocks here, some you know sturdy, sturdy wood blocks. To get it off the you need to raise it up about you know four to six inches or so for a little bit more clearance to drop that dpf out the bottom um, instead of bringing the whole carrier out and then hooking you know def lines and sensors and s and then you, i'll show you like i said again i'll show you in a second but uh if you do it the way that they're recommending then you got to pull the scr out the top of that that carrier and it's just i think it's a big hassle so um I'm working outside here because the shop's full of, the big shop's full of stuff, equipment, everything for the winter, um, which is usually the way it works out here. So 
if you're working on on a gravel like we got here you're gonna want a um a basic floor jack there and it, or if you're obviously if you're working on gravel you're gonna want to put a piece of plywood down and uh, you're gonna need a uh, floor jack like i've got there to lower the dpf down and to put it back up so you're gonna need a smooth surface if you're not working on concrete or if you're not working on in a shop so uh so keep that in mind if you are working on gravel like i am out here you need like i said to throw a piece of plywood or something down you'll be fine if you're not on concrete uh, other than that um Real everything else needs is a basic tool kit, uh, metric standard wrenches, um, deep well sockets, uh, and I use my uh, Dewalt impact driver there, so it's uh, been a pretty good tool for us. And uh, it's really not a very complicated process, so um, I'm going to go ahead and take these steps off here, then we'll get to the back and I'll show you what we got behind it and what we're going to do. We'll go from there. All right, so I took my steps off here, and if you don't know, there's three bolt holes on each step here. A total of six bolts, 17 millimeter. You zip those out, and that whole step unit comes off. It's the same on the T680s, I believe. So T660, T680s, uh, about the same removal on that. Um, so this is the DPF and SCR carrier assembly I guess you could say and here's the the depth injector on the SCR uh, so a lot of videos out there you're gonna see where they're gonna want you to disconnect this wiring harness back here which uh, I've got a video on that out uh, putting that new harness in if you're interested in that and then you're gonna take all these shrouds and stuff off you gotta take all this stuff off and then this whole carrier unbolts and it slides out well you're going to have to use a jack or something but they want you to take that whole thing out and uh, I, I I just think it's a lot of extra work so what, uh, what I've devised is uh, so these have rivet this, this is all riveted a lot of it and actually the bottom of mine it's kind of hard to see there used to be rivets down here and I just took a grinder cut all the rivets off and you can just take this top plate off Hold on. or sorry bottom plate not top plate it's... so anyways you can where there was rivets at you can just take a grinder and cut the rivets off and uh, then when you put it back together just put bolts in them but uh, there's two here two on that end then there's I believe one on each of the ends because this is what you need to get at right here is that if you have this center section is what we're going to replace or you know or if you needed to clean it that's the section that you're wanting to get out or and I mean if you're gonna clean it you got the catalyst up front here that you can usually send it and get clean too so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off uh, this bottom cover then uh, take the uh, the inlet and outlet off so so here's the other bolt there's one down here and then you just have this wiring harness two two plugs up here you gotta disconnect and um, and then up here you have the uh, outlet of the DPF and inlet to the SCR connection so that's really all you gotta take loose you take this this bottom cover off I mean like I said if you gotta take a grinder and cut the rivets take that whole thing off and then um, Take this clamp off unhook the uh, two plugs up here for the um, differential pressure sensor and your temperature sensors behind it and then um, unhook this guy here and uh, that uh, should be it I believe uh, yeah well you've got these two there's two more little uh, kind of concaved uh, carriage or, or uh, these two pieces up here that hold it in like little carriers and um, I did the same thing on those 
Uh, they had rivets as well, and we cut the rivets off and put and bored them back in because you have to take both of these pieces off each side here. So I didn't see I put, you know, you can see where I hit those with the grinder and uh, then put bolts back in it. So, so you got the outlet, inlet side on there, unhook your connections up here, then, um, like I said, you can either take these bands off or, you know, you can just uh, take these the bolts or rivets off and then this, then this whole unit just drops out the bottom. You want to put your jet floor jacket underneath it and jack it out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and we'll kind of get back to it here as, as we're going through it. So. All right, so we got everything taken loose here and I left this bracket here on the bottom kind of hang and these are right where I was telling you you can cut those rivets off the side and you can drop these brackets out I mean you have to take these clamps loose and then um, got my jack set up here and there is a little bracket here that goes up on this uh, inlet side you will have to take loose uh, also so there's a clamp here it's kind of hard to see right now you have to take the clamp loose and you'll take this loose off the uh, inside up here so other than that uh, we can go ahead and try dropping this thing out of here and then uh, take it in the shop where it's a little bit more hospitable as far as the temperature goes. Alright, so I'll go ahead and try to drop it down here. So it should just come right out just like that. So, so that's pretty much it. So that's why Alright, so it's completely down, but that is why you got to have your this side of the truck up a couple inches because if you don't have it up, uh, you won't be able to drag this out from underneath the truck. So I may have to take it out the back. So, but I'll go ahead and get this out of here, and then we'll take it in the shop and uh, see what it looks like, and we'll take it apart. Alright, so I got this DPF and got it in the shop here, and we're going to go ahead and take it all apart because, again, we're dealing with this center section right here, so we're going to have to break it down, both of these clamps, take the center section out, and then we'll put the one that's in this box into it in tomorrow's video, <clears throat> or the part two, uh, but in order to do all this, uh, you don't necessarily... We can unplug uh, the number one. These are all numbered, and you probably can't see it, but you have uh, you got one, two, and three, and they're again one, two, and three from from front to back. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So it's kind of hard to screw that up. And then uh, you have differential pressure sensor. You have the before ash, then after ash, or in and out, af in and after, however you want to look at it. And those are pretty they hook up you know this one goes before and this one goes after so um, it's pretty pretty easy um, so really the only thing we need to take apart here is we're going to take the number two and number three temp sensor out and we're going to take out these probes for the uh, differential pressure sensors <clears throat> and and of course take the clamps off but one of the most important things we need to do here is uh, we need to mark this so it can be indexed properly uh, I mean, meaning this inlet and the outlet side, we have to have those indexed properly so that when we put it back in there, everything lines up and we're not fighting ourselves. So the best way to do that is find a point of reference. I mean, if we were going to put this same unit back in, we could just draw a line across here and line everything up on both sides. But since we're not putting this one in, we have to find a common point of reference. And what I'm going to do 
these ports for this differential pressure sensor probes we're going to use the center of those and get it lined up as close as we can and then um, I'm just going to mark these so I'm going to try to get it about the center of that and this mark those like that so we then I'll take a picture of it before I take it apart and that way we can get everything lined up the same way that it was so we're not fighting ourselves when we're trying to put it back together and we'll do the same thing on this side So that way, get everything, so we can get everything all back in line again. So other than that, I'm going to bust off this clamp and this clamp and take this big clamp off. Then all this stuff will come off. And um, as I said, we can, we can leave this number one sensor in if we want. We can just unplug it here and leave that in the catalyst. And then we'll just have to take out these four sensors here, or the two probes and the two sensors. Then um, we'll take this apart and and I will see what it looks like inside. And um, then that'll conclude the part one of this, and we'll start uh, the assembly and reinstallation with part two here. So uh, I'll go ahead and take this apart real quick, and uh, we'll see what it looks like inside. Okay, so we got this thing all broke down into three sections here. Um, just another little tip I'll give you guys when you're pulling these clamps apart see there's four four sections in this so it's best to kind of go in between to try to pry up against something you know as it's when it's still on the unit and break each section loose because you, you don't want to bend it here because if you if you just grab this and pull it you can take take the risk of bending it here or here or here so it's best if you kind of get in the middle of these sections and kind of try to pry it loose because uh, these clamps are pretty these I just replaced these the last time I cleaned it. these these big clamps there's two of them um, you got one on each side of the DPF or the actual you know the filter section and I think these are about seventy five or a hundred dollars a piece so they can get if you screw one up it can be, you know, pretty expensive to replace them. Um, so kind of be careful with those. Uh, so we got three sections here. This first section is the catalyst, and the the inlet section and catalyst. And this is kind of where it all starts. Uh, you got a temperature sensor here, and you can't really see in there very well. But there's the, the kind of the honeycomb section there. It's not as thick as the DPF. I mean it's roughly that honeycomb section is probably six inches or so thick there. And and that's where it starts to burn and all that. So you can get those cleaned as well if you want. Um, this is the main section that gets plugged up. And this is the problem. As you can see it's all set it up. Um, I haven't tried to shine a flashlight or anything through it. Uh, so you got this this differential pressure sensor here. You got the, uh, the four ash side, and this is where it takes a reading between the inlet and the outlet side, and it tells how much this is plugged up, and that's what controls your regions or if it tells you when this thing's plugged up, obviously. And then you have a an inlet side temperature and an outlet side temperature sensor and that's pretty much it for this um, so but this is what we're dealing with here and that's what's in this box is a brand new one of these so we'll pull this the sensors and everything out of this and move all that stuff to the new one here tomorrow and put it all back together then you have the outlet side and this is this basically 
just a piece of metal with the with the outlet. So pretty simple. Then there's two new two new gaskets, one on the inlet and outlet, and that's what came in this kit here as well with it. So um, so that's pretty much it for the disassembly. So like I said, I'm going to pull these other two. Uh, I've already broke everything loose, so I just got to take everything apart here and. And uh, we'll pretty well call it a day, and we'll start back up tomorrow and uh, with part two of this and put it all back together. All right, guys, so that pretty much concludes uh, the first part of this video uh, segment here. Uh, so I'm going to get the rest of the sensors pulled out of this and clean everything up, and uh, we'll start putting it back together tomorrow with that, uh, that new center filter section, and uh, we'll get it put it back up in the truck. So I hope that kind of helps you out and uh, like I said be looking out for the second part of this when we put it back together and uh, put it back in the truck uh, so and, and, uh, I hope this these little tips help anybody out that's trying to do try to do that uh, trying to do this out there themselves so you can save a lot of money doing it yourself because um, this this is one of the most problematic things on these newer trucks out there and uh, the labor part of it is um, is astronomical it's more than than anything else for the most part you know as coming from you know the mechanic uh, you know the shop side to the driver's side it's a uh, it, it's a big problem and, uh, and especially this like I said it's one of the most problematic things out there with these newer trucks uh, so again I uh, hope that hope that helps you all out uh, look for the second part of this uh, you know stay tuned for that uh, so I said if you haven't subscribed yet Please do that. Uh, hit the bell for the updates. Uh, like the video. Give us a thumbs up. And uh, like I said, if you're new, uh, like I said, again, subscribe. If you haven't already, uh, watch out for, uh, we do the trucking stuff, owner-operator stuff, uh, Landstar stuff, uh, farm too, farm equipment. I see there's tractors all over around here. So we're always doing something with that stuff. And uh, we'll have a little bit more going on this spring with actually getting out in the field and doing stuff too. So uh, look out for that here in the next uh, coming months. And um, so that's pretty, pretty much it. Uh, we appreciate the support and we'll see you all next time.